Welcome to the Money Watch Show. It's Thursday, June 8th, and we are here trying to answer your financial questions. I am Jill Schlesinger. I'm joined by Mark Talercio, the executive producer, the co-host, and the finest, finest uh, cook on the Lower East Side. How are you, Mark? I wouldn't go that far. I am well. I'm well. How are you? I'm doing very well. I hope by the time this airs that everyone in your household has now been cleared of any infections and uh, maladies. This is the household that runs amok with non-life-threatening, thank God, but serious illnesses enough to like, I think I push you back a, a week or two. I mean, I think you were sick for six weeks at one point. Over the winter, yes, I took oh, oh, over the stretch of like I don't know if it started before Christmas and then it went into it went into January. I there was a period where I took I was on pills for twenty six days because I remember I was going to come down and give you Christmas presents and you're like, do not come into the apartment. Yeah, yeah, that was rough. It seems like uh, we're never really all healthy at the same time. It just seems like it's always something. Uh, So, Mark, uh, so much great stuff on the website. Thank you for maintaining it. How is it going updating the website without web queen Karen Kranick? Yeah, we we are preparing for the departure of the the queen, the web queen. So uh, it's been slow and steady. It probably, you know, two and a half, three hours longer than it takes her to do some of this stuff. But, uh, you know, figuring it out. Is it like you are King Charles and she is the queen? Is that what is happening right now? We're preparing for your coronation. When shall we have the coronation? Uh, it'll be apt to have a coronation for you, my friend. Yes, we will have to do that in sometime in July, right? That's when we have her till? Exactly. Exactly. So anyway, why do you care about this? Because Mark is now updating many aspects of our website. I mean, he does so much already. It's hard to believe there is any, because that was when I said, oh, we're going to have to get somebody else. And you said, no, 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 no. First, you said you have no more capacity. And then all of a sudden you took it back. So is that just show me that you're a control king? Yeah. And you know what? And we should also mention something because at at one of the episodes, I can't remember when, but you mentioned something about getting an intern. And I got to tell you, we got a lot of emails from people. Really? Yeah, a lot of emails from people who who were interested if uh, such a position opened up. But yeah, the thing is, is I don't know. I'm not uh, I'm not very good at training people, and with interns, you know, they kind of come and go. And by the time they're up to speed, then I got to start all over with somebody else. It's just I, I don't want to go down that road. Oh man, Mark, you know what? Its problem is that we had the best intern ever. It was our first ever, and it was all downhill from there. So when she becomes the executive producer of CBS Mornings, I will be happy that you did such a good training of her. Uh, All right, let's go and talk to somebody because you guys all have financial questions, and we hopefully have some answers. Today, we are joined by Alan, who's on the line from Seattle. Hello, Alan. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Good. What's shaking? What can we do for you? Well, I, uh, I'm 48. My wife's 46. You know, we've worked hard and done well and, and have some money in the bank. And we really are hoping to retire early and travel at least mostly full time when the kids who are now 12 turning 13 in a, in a week or two um, are, are out of the house. Kids meaning twins? Yeah. So twin boys. Okay. Identical or fraternal? Fraternal. Ah, uh, Mark, you know what Jackie says about that? She says uh, they're not really twins. They're siblings born at the same time, you know, because identical twins are genetic freaks. So does that mean I have, what, five years or eight years to get you retired? Uh, six. What do you mean? You're going to like, like literally they're done with high school, done, that's it? Well, that's, you know, I, I don't know would be a better answer. Okay. Um, you know, starting the, the planning process. But that ideally it would be retire early when the kids graduate from high school. Yeah, within a year or two of that, yeah. Okay, okay, got it. So let's see if it's possible. First of all, uh, do you guys both work? Yes. How much do you earn? Um, So my income is kind of variable. I'm an attorney, solo practice. About half of my work is contingent fee. And sometimes those things take years to, uh, to, to birth. Um, my wife works as a construction executive and so her income is a lot more stable. Um, she, last year she made 225. Mm-hmm. Last year I made about 325. Um, and then we have a rental and the rental, at least on, uh, the tax return says it made about 80,000, but the, the cash flow is higher than that. 
All right. What have you accumulated in terms of savings? Let's start with that. We don't even, I'm because I'm not so, well, let me start with this. Are you both maxing out your retirement accounts? So my, my wife is, I am not. And is she it, contributing to a traditional 401k? Yeah. So we're contributing enough to get the match, which is 5%. That's it? Just up to the match? Right. What are you doing with all the rest of your money? It's in the bank. Talk to me about it. Bank, bank or in brokerage account or both? Uh, both. So I, I, I can, of, of course, sense your consternation about us not maxing out our retirement accounts. I, I really would prefer, or at least traditionally have preferred to keep that cash available for real estate investment. Mm-hmm. And once I put it in a, a Roth IRA or whatever, it's really difficult to do that. So I really, would okay. prefer to, I mean, we early on, we, we, we did that traditional savings and we do have money in, in what I call protected accounts. Do you own just one rental property or multiple? Uh, one. How much is that worth? It's worth about uh, 3.6. Oh my God. And is there a mortgage outstanding on it? Yes. How much? 600. Is this a house or is this a multi-unit? What is this? It's five units. Five units. Okay. Is your desire to keep these or is this money, is this, is money that you've earned in real estate available, that equity um, in six years? Would you sell it? Would you be, would you consider that? Or do you want to just keep letting it crank along? I would keep letting it crank along. Okay. Got it. And so when you said it makes, it shows $80,000 on the tax return, but real cash flow to you, because I know that there are expenses and there's depreciation, but what do you think it's really providing you on a monthly basis after expenses? Starting in September, when the new leases are in effect, the cash flow to us will be about 165 a year. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. Can you live on 165 grand a year, the two of you or not? Well, that's the that's the question, isn't it? Um, I think if we were traveling full time, we would probably need about fifteen thousand dollars a month. So it's not quite there. You know, I think there are some unknowns from my perspective about you know what do we do for health insurance in the meantime. Yes, of course, of course. All right, well let's let's walk through this. So in retirement accounts, how much money in retirement accounts? So total uh, total in retirement accounts, a million two sixty five. Okay. And what about brokerage accounts? About 900 in a, what I call unrestricted. Mm-hmm. And then another 360 in savings. How much is your uh, primary home worth? About a million four. Mortgage or not? Mortgage of 429. Now, this is a home that you would want to keep, again, six years from now. Do we want this house or do we not want this house? That one's less certain than the... Uh, than the rental. Okay. So, I mean, the real question is in six years, what we are going to do. So do you have education money set aside for the twins? Yes. So that's fully funded. Okay, great. So we don't have to worry about that. And and if we were to look, let's say the last few years, I know you said what last year was and you have variable income, but if we said for the next six years, right? Let's pretend that you both make 225 a year. You don't make any more than that. What do you think you can save on that combined income of say, let's, as I said, let's just kind of go back and say it's a 450 a year together. What do you think you're saving on that? So if we were netting, you know, on that 450, the year, your hypothetical 450, yep. we would net about 350. Yep. And if we spent about 225, you know, that's 125 a year. Right? Let's say, let's say a hundred a year, just cause like, what if something bad happens? Right. Okay. So let's say that you're saving a hundred a year and we're not dipping into anything. So right now for the next six years, you make an extra hundred grand a year. Uh, you're saving a hundred grand a year. Like to some extent, I'm going to leave the money that's that 360 that's in the bank. Let's just kind of leave it alone. Right. Keep it aside there for a second. So now what we have is you have your retirement funds that are growing, right? You have your brokerage account and you have another plus 600. It seems to me that you can do this. And I'm going to tell you why, because I think it's all about this, the cash flow of the, of the units. If you were to really kind of drill down and look at what you're spending money on, I don't even know what your travel is going to look like. Is it going to be for a year, two years? What do we think? So we uh, took a sabbatical when the kids were 
starting when the kids were three and we ended it when the kids had just turned five. Two years does not sound like very much. Okay. <laughs> so we, I mean, I'm talking about serious, you know, mostly full-time travel for probably five years or, or longer. And you, but you're okay if I say, but we really holding you to 15 grand a month, right? Yes. Okay. How about like, do you have insurance and, and wills and estate stuff? Is that all done? So uh, the wills are done. We need a little bit of, uh, of updating um, mm-hmm. as maybe most people do. Um, my wife has uh, term insurance. I don't actually. When we when we went to um, Central America on our sabbatical, there was a minor administrative error, and that didn't get paid, and so that got canceled. I've tried to get back into it, mm-hmm. and they won't let me because <laughs> in my in my zeal to cure my snoring, I got myself diagnosed with mild sleep apnea. Oh, brother. And now they won't now. touch me, which is yeah. stupid. That and I scooby dive like once a year. Honestly, I'm not sure you, you even need insurance. I wouldn't worry about it. I was just wondering if there was some old like permanent life insurance policy, which I don't think there is. So that's fine. Obviously, before you go, you're going to make sure that all of your estate documents are perfect. So you retire in six years and now we've to, is your 15 grand a month include health insurance or not? I, I'm not sure, and that's what I need to drill down on. You know, if if you're out of the country, if you're out of the United States, health insurance is terribly inexpensive. Mm-hmm. When we were in Central America, we paid for a family of four. I think we paid sixty dollars a month. Okay, we're not doing that. We're going to get you're going to get like real insurance because if something happened to your kids at that time, we have to make sure they're taken care of, and they will be in the United States, right? That's true. Okay, thanks. I'm glad I got that down. So let's say 17000 a month is where we are. Okay. That means we need to spend some of your cash down. Are you, oh, are you just cool? Will you be okay? Because some people will be like, oh, I've saved all this money, but I don't want to actually spend any of it. Uh, but, you know, we need to, we need 200 and let's call it $205,000 a year. And you're, you have 165 coming in from your, rental property, which may or may not go up. I mean, but let's just hold it at that for now. And that means that we get to spend 40 grand a year out of your brokerage account. We're going to do it from, uh, let's say you're age 54. Let's do it for six years. Why not? Will you travel for six years? So you're going to spend a quarter of a million dollars of your assets. How do you feel about that? Fine? Yeah, that's fine. And the the thing that we're not considering now is if we don't sell the house, we can rent it out, right? Exactly. It'll, it'll yeah. be you know, that'll flow probably 3,500 a month or something like that. So let's say, and and do you make less money on the rental property? Do you do any management yourself or is it all professionally managed right now? I do everything. Oh, so we have to hire a manager, right? Well, I don't know that we would need to hire a property manager, but I would definitely need to hire um, someone to go out there and you know, unclog the dish, you know, the. All right. So we're not going to have, so how much do you think that 25 grand a year? Should we make it? In other words, out of your 165 that you're netting now, let's say that it's really going to be 125 in the future. Let's just say you have to spend some money to have somebody do it, which means we need to spend, you know, 40, another uh, four, ten, six, so. So we need to actually spend more of your cash down. Do you agree with that or not? Yeah, I wouldn't agree with the 125, but I, I agree with your notion that I would need some help. All right. What, why? You think it's 135? Like how much, you, you have, who's going to do this for you? What are they going to do? 25 grand a year? You tell me, what do you think we're going to need to spend to replace you? Probably 20 grand a year, I think would be appropriate. Okay. Okay. That's fine. So now at, all right. So let's, let's go back. Let's just remind you, we have, we need 205 grand a year. You'll have 145 coming in. That's a differential of 60,000. So we have to pay 60, we have to pull $60,000 out of your account over six years. So that's $360,000. You know, what's magical about that. What did you tell me was in your bank account? (laughs) $360,000. In Yiddish, we say this is bershert. This is meant to be. So what that does mean is that over the next six years, I actually agree with you, you need of that hundred grand a year that's going into savings, you should be splitting it between money in the bank and money in brokerage because you don't want to leave yourself zero when you come back from this travel. So uh, I think you can do this. I think that um, amazingly, even though I, I, I mean, the numbers are in, 
incredible because if you spend down all the money in the bank, right? Pretend it's gone. You have $1.5 million in your brokerage account, probably about, and you have one point, you're probably going to end up with three and a half million dollars. Let's say it's, let's, let me give you the low side. You're going to end up with $3 million between the brokerage and the retirement account. You will have that $3 million when you return, that'll be great. And you'll have the rental property, which you'll be paying down the mortgage slowly, but surely. I mean, if you come back, the, the question becomes, you know, is that it for you guys? Are you done with working at that point? Because I don't know, maybe you will be, maybe that'll just be done. Then we have to get you from, you know, age 60 to your full retirement age or 70, and then you claim some social security and then you should be fine, but you're going to spend down some of your assets. And since you're never going to sell the real estate or, you know, for the foreseeable future, that keeps clicking in and then you'll have retirement social security. So you'll have two social security checks and the rental income. So it doesn't seem like that huge an issue here as long as you are willing to spend down retirement assets. I don't think there's any problem here. As you said, you made a great investment in rental property. It has worked. And, you know, I have no issue around you guys not putting money into retirement. You, Like you said, you've got plenty of money that you've squirreled away. Um, what other questions do you have? I'm not doing a very good job of actively managing the money that needs to be managed. Yeah, I wanted to get back into real estate, but I or, or some additional property, and I really couldn't find anything. So I in, invested in a bunch of REITs, and and then things went sideways with COVID, and some of those were like commercial office buildings, which was not so good. And I just have been too afraid to sell any of that at the loss. And I I feel like I'm not. I need to more actively manage that, but I don't have the. I would say time, but that's probably not true the motivation to knuckle down and figure out the details about mm-hmm. what I should be doing. And so I think really I probably need an investment person, a financial planner. Yeah. I mean, that that's pretty easy to find. And, you know, you could do something um, with a, maybe somebody who could also help you run these numbers as you approach this. I mean, look, if you can let go of like, oh, I bought real estate, uh, you know, I doubled down on real estate and I made a bad investment. You let someone just sort of say, look, let's clean this up. Let's buy some index funds. Let's do some planning for you. Let's get you where you want to go and make it nice and tidy. I, I am a hundred percent down with that. I really believe that for someone in your situation, especially if you are going to be leaving the country and it sounds like you're managing all of this and maybe your wife needs to have a relationship with somebody in case something were to happen to you. I think it's time to maybe interview some CFPs. And, you know, I just would be careful because it sounds to me like when you say active management, I'm not looking for someone who's going to like say, oh, here's the top, here's the bottom. We're looking for somebody who can very uh, conservatively manage the funds that you've accumulated so it can do what you want to do, not take huge risks, not try to time the market and get you where you want to go. That I, I think you can find. And I think that I would absolutely agree that that is something that could benefit you guys. Well, I'm, I'm looking for an, an elegant mix of affordability, competence, and, and alignment of interests. Um, mm, I, uh, well, okay. What do you consider affordable? I'm not sure. I know that what I perceive as not affordable is 1% over the next 20 years. Well, I mean, look, if you say, I don't want to spend one, well, first of all, you have $2 million right now, right? You got 900 in brokerage and 1.2 in retirement. So you have $2 million. So you should be able to get it less than 1%. Would 0.75% be affordable to you or not? Uh, I, I'm not sure. So what I would say is this, there's a few different things to consider. What you could do is you could just look, park the money at Vanguard, use the Vanguard personal service advisor, cost 0.3% a year. You'll get a little financial planning and you'll get this thing going. It'll just literally be a robo advisor get it going. They'll talk to you. You'll talk about what money you need in cash. You'll talk, but let them do it. And if you're willing to let them do it, that's the cheapest way for you to get where you want to go. What about something a little more a customized? Few more whistles, though. Yeah. What's kind of the next step Step up? Uh, you know, listen, you could talk to some people and do a, a fee only. You could pay someone 20 grand and say, give me an investment portfolio that I could use and get myself out of the situation. And then you can kind of pay that one-time fee, get the plan, get the investment plan and do it yourself. And then put, then you put it on um, autopilot. That's another way to do it. 
and then you can get the benefit of somebody who does customize, but you're not paying them on an ongoing basis. Right. And how would I, how would I locate fine ladies and gentlemen who do that? Ladies sort of and gentlemen, um, you know, there are plenty of people at NAPFA, the National Association of Personal Financial Advisors, and you find someone who is a fee only planner who will do the plan for a fixed fee. And then you'll implement it. And you say that to them up front. I want a fixed fee for you to do the plan, including an investment plan right now. I'm not looking for ongoing investment management. I want a one-time fee. And that's what you would do. That might've been the piece, the piece that I didn't know existed. That exists. Absolutely. I wish you the best of luck and you, you let us know how things go. Okay. I appreciate your help. My pleasure. Okay. If you, like Alan and his wife, want to really call it quits and do some travel and then also take care of business when you return, you must send us a note. Go to jillonmoney.com, click the contact us button. And while you're there, you can buy the book. You can subscribe to our new service, Jill on Money Live. And you can also see links to lots of different things. So, you know, if if you wanted to say like, wait, wait, how do I hire a financial planner? Um, you go to the resources section and you click on that and it says the questions to ask. And then we've got a link to NAPFA. So all those things live at the website, jillonmoney.com. Mark Talercio is the co-host and the executive producer. Karen Kranick is our web queen, and we are distributed by Paramount Global. We drop our episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Do something nice for someone else today. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you next week. 